Hi, just a little bit of self-promotion before this video begins. This video forms part of a much longer course on teaching primary school science, which you can access on Udemy. I'll put a link to the course in the video description below. I'll also put some links up during the video and a QR code you can scan as well. Here we go. Hi and welcome to lecture 13 of the teaching primary school science course. In the previous lecture we looked at questioning. Uh, in this lecture I want to take a little bit more of a look at the role of pupil talk and encouraging pupil talk in the classroom. So the aims of the lecture are we going to look at the types of classroom talk, um, look at talking for learning, uh, how do we encourage people talk and other opportunities and links. So pupil talk provides pupils with a way to develop and express their ideas as well as comparing them with the ideas from others and also helps them to develop critical thinking skills. It motivates them to use their speaking and listening skills and it helps them to learn how to respect and how to respond to each other. So with pupil to pupil talk, the pupils talking to each other, it helps them to make sense of what we want them to learn, helps them to develop an ability to reason scientifically. Um, if you get successful pupil to pupil discussion, all members of a group are contributing and all opinions and ideas are respected. So discussion in science is important. There are a lot of benefits connected with developing confidence in sharing ideas, uh, learning from others and learning from their peers, um, and thinking about the different ways that children can use discussion to extend their vocabulary, to ask questions and challenge one another, and it often provides us with an opportunity for formative assessment. Even in the national curriculum, the importance of talk was highlighted. The importance of spoken language in people's development, the uh, quality and variety of language that people hear and speak are key factors in developing their scientific vocabulary, but they must be assisted in making their thinking clear, both themselves and others, and teachers should ensure that pupils build secure foundations by using discussion to probe and remedy misconceptions. So when we're thinking about discussion science, we're talking about it's talking for thinking. We're allowing children to, to talk and sound out ideas and explain what they think to each other. So to allow that to take place, we need to provide the right environment in the classroom to accept and allow for discussion and uh, pupil questions to, to develop. We need to allow them time for that to develop. Agree some rules and some ground rules in the classroom about how we listen to each other. Uh, we model good talk through our listening skills and teachers should model that as well and we should be developing activities and planning opportunities within our science lessons for this kind of discussion to develop. Looking at the EEF report, uh, there is a section there looking at um, how we should be encouraging people to explain their thinking. That can be verbally or in written form. You need to create a collaborative learning environment. So we should be supporting the development of listening skills where needed. We should be asking the children to take turns to contribute and respect each other's views and ideas. We should establish clear expectations around the participation and we should be designing tasks that encourage participation, think about the size of the group, think about whether the children will need scaffolding to help them with that. One nice approach to this came out of the Primary Science Teacher Trust um, research. They developed something called Bright Ideas Time, which is short, focused discussion slots using discussion prompts, which you can use at different points in the lesson to uh, get the children talking and thinking. Uh, if you're interested in more, the link is there. And again, I'll, I'll put the link in the downloadable. So this includes things like odd one outs, uh, PMIs, which is a um, a positive minus and an interesting point about something, uh, big questions, mystery objects and so on. I'll give some examples of that in the next few slides. So a mystery object, this could be something you, you pick up and hand out to the children, a real actual object or it might be so an image you can use on the screen to um, inspire questions from the children. Look at the picture on the screen, what does it make you think about, what do you think it is, what would you like to know about this picture, what questions are you going to ask, why is it symmetrical, why is it two colours, how big is it, is it spiky, is the other side the same as this side and so on. What questions the children have and then can they can work out what it is. If you're interested that's uh, chamomile pollen. So another mystery object we could do would be things like this. So there's a lovely website that the Science Museum have with lots of weird and interesting objects. So the children could just think about what is this, what do they think it might be, what questions do they have, and can they guess what it is. In actual fact, that was a baby weighing scales from Liverpool Royal Infirmary. It was used to weigh babies that are just born. PMIs, so we could pose a big question like, you know, what if? What if humans could make their own food like plants? What if there was no electricity? What if we could hear the sun? These kind of things. What would be positive about that? What would be a minus about that? And what would be interesting things about that? So think about if we could if we could photosynthesize, it would be good because we wouldn't need to eat. The minuses might be that we'd have to do what plants do and hibernate in the winter when there's not a lot of, of water and sunshine around. Interesting points. Would we need clothes? 
because we'd have to have as much skin area exposed to the sunshine as, as possible. So PM and I is a kind of interesting thing to get the children to discuss. And again, talking groups, talking pairs, talking small groups, discuss it, and then share their ideas back with the class. Odd one outs are always a useful um, way of getting misconceptions and seeing what they know about a topic area. Try and pick them where there is no right or wrong answer. They all could be the odd one out as long as there's a valid reason given. So in this situation here, we've got a lion, a meerkat, and a zebra. Which of these would be the odd one out? There's, there's none of these are wrong. They all could be if you give the right reasons. Throw this up there, get the children discussing it, explain their reason to a partner, and then share the good ones back with you. Different example. Here's an odd one out. Here's three different animals. Pick an odd one out. Explain why it's different. We could do same and different. So we've got a whale and we've got a shark. So we need to show what we know about animal classification. How are these the same? Well, they're very similar body plans, um, very similar niche. They live in the same habitat. But how are they different? Well, one is a mammal, one is a fish. So one breathes air and has lungs, has warm blood. One has cold blood and gills. One can give birth to live babies and suckle them. One may keep the eggs inside, but the babies hatch inside. They're not attached to the mum by a placenta and so on. We could look at big questions like, you know, why is it when we look at the stars we are looking back in time? Um, and the children can talk about how light takes time to get to us and hundreds of millions of years for light to reach us. When they're looking at a star, we're looking at something from millions of years ago. There's a good opportunity here to start using AI to generate really eye-catching and interesting images. And a couple of the images I've just shown you have all been AI-generated images there. I didn't do a Google search, I just got AI to, to make the pictures for me. Which leads me into pictures for talk. A very good picture can be a great stimulus for engaging the children to provide that wow factor to start a lesson. So it can generate effective talk. Again, the PSTT, the Primary Science Teacher Trust, have uh, a section called pictures for talk and some resources you can download for free to try out. So looking at our, our image here, how do you think the tree got inside the house? Why do you think that? What evidence have you got for that? And there's lots of discussion then about the tree may have started small and started to grow and the house has collapsed. Further questions, you know, what can you see that's living? What's not living? What's the house made from? Linking it to materials. Where did the roof go? What's it going to look like in the future? Um, how long do you think the tree's been there? Lots of questions about you know, what the tree might need to stay alive. We can have sorting activities. These could be card sorts. These could be on the interactive whiteboard. They could provide a context in when the children can show their understanding through reasoning. And maybe there's a bit of cognitive conflict in there. But there's things in there they're not exactly sure what they are. Um, this might help reveal misconceptions. It could be sorting these statements into true or false. Always, sometimes, never. It could be matching. We could be sorting things into classifications. So we could have animals and plants or vertebrates and invertebrates or mammals and birds and fish and so on. So here's an example of a, an on-screen, this is a Google Jamboard which everyone's sorting into living, dead and never been alive and the children can access this on their, on their Chromebooks and move the images around to the correct part of the screen talking while they do this. So do this in pairs and they can discuss which ones you think they should go into and which ones they're not sure about, what confusing things are there. Materials are the good ones to do here as well. If you've got solids and gases and having things like toothpaste or shaving foam which are kind of halfway between because they're a mix of two they're a solid and a liquid or they're an emulsion so a solid and liquid or they're um, foam which is a liquid and a gas mixed together so which things are confusing on here we can do classifying we can make classification trees branching databases and so on so have a stop and a think how could you incorporate some of these ideas into your own teaching right now what bright ideas time activities could you do could you start a lesson off with no one out or um, a pmi or a big question could it form part of a plenary towards the end of a lesson so in terms of support i've mentioned um, bright ideas time already from the primary science teacher trust there's also explorify and best evidence science teaching which i'll discuss in the next couple of slides so bright ideas time was um, a resource produced by the pstt the pictures for talk is also um, runs alongside that so there's an excellent set of resources if you look on the primary science teacher trust website you'll find it Explorify is a good free source of odd one out activities, PMIs, big questions, they have nice images where you zoom in and zoom out, so you look at something very close up and children can discuss what they think it is and then the image zooms out, there's lots of other resources that have just been added to it as well, it's free, explorify.uk, go check it out. Uh, best evidence science teaching is a collection of free diagnostic questions to reveal children's misconceptions and there's ideas for response activities to help the children challenge misconceptions and develop their understanding. I've mentioned this in lecture 9. A quick word for organising discussion, there are some different things you can do to 
uh, help the children um, in terms of classroom routines and how you might get them to be to be grouped there's some different strategies you can try so there are things like obviously just talking in, in your tables that's fine the group of four can just group of six can discuss but we might try snowballing so maybe you start in pairs the pairs get into fours and the fours get into eights so the snow you're getting bigger each time you may have envoying so you might discuss as a group then one member from your table goes to another table goes to another group to explain what your group found out and the person in that group moves to another, group, another table and so on uh, you might also have jigsawing so you start off in table one two three and four and then within that table um, if everybody is one two three four numbered then all the ones get together all the twos get together all the threes get together all the fours get together and they discuss so each table mixes up and mix up other tables then to discuss what they found out there, there are various different ways of doing it uh, another strategy you can use, I've seen this used quite well, this is a picture taken from the, the Time Z uh, resources grouping card, I've seen lots of versions of these grouping cards out there, is that children could be given the card in and kept maybe in a science book which gives them a number, a colour, a shape and a, an object. So they might be a 1, a triangle, a D and a blue and they mix up, you can work out spreadsheets, kind of make sure these all randomise up a little bit and then today we're grouping by numbers, all the ones get together, all the twos get together, all the threes get together, all the fours get together right, this lesson we're grouping by shape, so all the squares, the triangles, uh, the hexagons get together next week we're, we're grouping by colour, so the blues and the reds and the greens and the yellows get together and children will be in different groups, so that means they can have different groups each time so it's a very quick way of, of mixing up the groups, so not every lesson they're working with the same people so putting this into context, we're looking at developing the sort of talking, listening and thinking skills. They're useful in science investigations. So talking doesn't take place in isolation, but it's complemented by other forms of communication. So talking can help develop their reading skills and their writing in science and across the curriculum. So if we are developing uh, their talking skills, it will help um, alongside their reading and their writing skills as well. So productive talk needs to be supported. We want to um, develop culture for talking and listening. We want to allow for progression discussion skills. Think about how those skills are developed across the key stages, across the years. What techniques do we need to develop to uh, manage talk in the classroom? Um, and how can you introduce uh, talk activities as part of your science teaching? What opportunities have you got for bringing that in? So just to reflect on that, I mean, if we think about planning activities, we need to provide opportunities for all children to articulate their thinking. Can we provide scenarios for cognitive conflict that helps them out? How do we allow children to develop their thinking and reasoning skills? How do we help them to develop their understanding in key concept areas? How do we develop their communication skills to give opportunities to practice? How do we look at using these questions and their this pupil talk as part of formative assessment? How do we sort of observe what they're doing and make notes of what they're doing? How do we support and complement other skills, so writing and so on, and how do we help the children become aware of their own thinking and to become more critical thinkers? So in summary, we've looked at the types of classroom talk, we've looked at talking for learning, we've looked at encouraging people talk, and we've looked at some of the opportunities for um, where you might get resources for that. Thanks for your time. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.